So you're thinking about moving to Brighton, Michigan. Well, I highly suggest you stick around because I'm gonna show you around. I have made several videos about Brighton, Michigan from cost of living, things to do, reasons to live there, some coffee places, everything under the sun. But one thing I haven't done is shown you around, giving you some visuals to really work with. So that's what this video is gonna be about. So stick around for the driving tour. In this Brighton, Michigan driving tour, I'll show you some attractions, things to do, schools, popular neighborhoods that vary in price, as well as the downtown space, while giving you my thoughts and experiences since I've called Brighton home for 25 plus years. This tour won't have any rhyme or reason really, I'll point things out as I go, share facts, and do my best not to put you to sleep. I know what you're thinking, it's, it's looking all sorts of gloomy outside on this Michigan December day, and I agree, but I wanted to not just pick the prettiest day possible just to give you a sense of what it's truly like to live here, as it tends to be a little cloudy throughout the winter, but what's crazy is this year we don't have any snow at this time and it's after Christmas already. I know there's these forecasts out there estimate a greater than 55% chance that El Nino or whatever is strong through January to March 2024, which means warmer weather to my knowledge, but I'm, I'm no weatherman though. Off to my left is Hawkins Elementary School, where I went growing up and is one of four elementary schools in Brighton, Michigan. Driving up to this intersection of Rickett and Lee Road, I'm going to make my way to one of the most affordable single-family home options in Brighton, Michigan. The subdivision off of Lee Road has about 350 homes in it, 13 have sold in the last year or so, and two are pending, ranging from 165,000 to 367,000. This area has come so far in the last few years. Several of the houses have been fixed up. I have helped several clients move into this neighborhood for under $200,000, and the prices continue to appreciate. Not only is this a well below average price point for Brighton. It's also near everything you could imagine, and you'll see that as I continue to drive around. A few miles from downtown, right next to the on-ramp for US 23 and I-96, as well as the shopping options in Green Oak Mall, you just need to get past this disaster of a roundabout that everyone complains about. I'll take a little scenic drive through the Green Oak Village place and give a link to a map in the description if you're interested about all the businesses that are in here. I'll take you back through the roundabout just to give you a sense of how insane this can be during crazy traffic times. And I'll veer off to the left and head down Whitmore Lake Road, which goes right alongside US 23. And off to my right, you can see Kohl's, Costco, Culver's, Olive Garden, the new Texas Roadhouse, and Holiday Inn. Growing up, literally none of this stuff was here. There was no mall, no roundabouts, and since then the growth has just exploded. Chugging along, I'm turning right onto Winans Lake Road, and on my right is the Legacy Center for all your sports performance needs. It's got the practice fields, it's got fitness, it's got all those things right here on this lot. And turning through yet another roundabout, I'm on Rickett Road again, which is where I started my tour. I'm just on the other side of it. I'm going to take a little detour as I venture through Rickett Road into a neighborhood I spent a lot of time as a kid. It wasn't mine, but this is where the friends were. And they also gave out the king size candy bars on Halloween over here, and that's that's gold when you're a kid, obviously. This neighborhood has a little less than 350 houses, and it stretches all along Rickett Road on the right side while 
Huron Meadows is on the left side, which is where I frequently walk the trails. There's a golf course and it's well groomed for cross country skiing from what I hear. There's been 10 sales in here within the last 12 months and one active home as of recording this ranging from $268,000 to $500,000. Stepping out of the neighborhood, shooting down Rickett Road once again, I'm taking a left on Malpy Road, but before I do, there's a little place on the corner called Grasshopper Gardens where you can get plants, outdoor stuff, and has been a place my family and I have gotten our pumpkins for years and years. Scooting down Malpy Road, there's yet another roundabout that leads into the one middle school in Brighton, Scranton Middle School. This Roundabout was necessary because I remember the countless times of congestion right here when trying to get in and out of the school. Jumping back onto Malby Road, I'm, I'm taking a right at the stop sign where we would, if you were to go straight, it would be towards Hamburg. And going right will take you on Hamburg Road, which then turns into Brighton Lake Road once we hit the city limit. I'm taking a quick right into Spencer Woods subdivision before I do that to bring up a point. A lot of people ask me what the best subdivisions are in the area and what a lot of people don't know is there are a lot of these 30 home communities throughout the city so it's hard to pinpoint a list exactly when they each bring something good to the table. It's not like areas in Texas or California where your subdivisions are cities in themselves with hundreds and hundreds of houses, schools, etc. A lot of them are just like this one, but I'll show you some other desirable communities going forward too. The last home that sold in here was a year and a few months ago for around $300,000, but the majority of the houses are estimated to be at $500 to $700,000, as you can see the fluctuations in home sizes as I drive around. Jumping out of this neighborhood and going on Hamburg Road once again, I'll make a turn into one of the highly desirable communities in Brighton, and that's Pine Creek. Pine Creek covers 700 acres and has over 150,000 trees, if you can believe it. It's nestled around Brighton Lake, and it's situated behind Brighton High School. I'll show you this side of it now, then after I go through the high school, I'll show you the other side of it too. There's about 254 homes in here, 96 condos, and 88 other home sites on the south side that is known as Pine Creek Bluffs for all the different varieties of housing in here. This community has tennis, a pool and spa, a luxury cabin which I'll be driving by in the second portion, and several walking trails. In the past there's been 23 pending sold and active single family homes and condos and they're ranging from $400,000 to $1.9 million as most of the homes on the lake on the west side will go for $1.6 to $1.9 million but on the east side of Brighton Lake there are a few homes that have sold between $500,000 and $850,000. Jumping out of Pine Creek now we, we hit the Brighton city limit. I know these Borders may seem a little confusing, but I just made a video about this that I will link below pertaining to Brighton and the surrounding townships. So looking to the left side, these are the cheaper homes I mentioned located on the east side of the lake, little tighter together, situated on that busier road. I'm going to continue straight on Brighton Lake Road for a little while until we hit Grand River Avenue, which is the main vein that runs through Brighton and it tends to be where the traffic is heaviest. Some of you from out of state and heavier metro areas are probably laughing at me for thinking this is heavy traffic. It's not too bad right now. This is actually around noon on a weekday, so a few people are spilling out for lunch. Continuing through Grand River, there's several local businesses on either side of the street. I'll pass Main Street for a second and continue on Grand River just to show you what else there is down here, then circle back to show you the new and improved Main Street in Brighton, Michigan. Passing the Dairy Queen on the left, it's, it's something I went to a lot as a kid because you could walk up to it in the back from the Mill Pond located in downtown Brighton where the bridges lead to DQ and we would get blizzards and walk around everywhere in the summertime. There's so many places I could talk about as we drive down Grand River. I'll have to put a map up to show you all these different businesses I'm passing to. Then we get up to this main intersection where I will turn left on Chalice Road and take a right into another string of businesses such as Target, Home Depot, Staples, Party City, Chili's, IHOP, etc. And as I get closer to the stop sign, off in the distance is MJR Theater where I've 
seen countless movies. I mean, I couldn't even count them on both hands. And Independence Village is right around the corner. A retirement home, which was my first job at age 14, where I worked my way up to management and the residents talked me into getting my real estate license and the rest is history. Moving along to my right, there's a new University of Michigan Specialty Care Center that has been newly put into Brighton several years ago. Then we have Cheryl Stockwell Preparatory Academy High School on my left. The middle school for that academy is on my right. And the preschool actually has a Howell address off Highland Road too, so if you're curious. Driving along, there's St. Patrick's Middle School on my right, as well as the Meyer Outdoor Skate Park on my right, just passing St. Patrick's, and the Brighton District Library and U.S. Post Office on my left, and Meyer is on my right as I approach the intersection taking me back onto Grand River Avenue. Going back the way I initially came, I wanted to circle back to a few other affordable options in Brighton. Behind this strip of businesses is the Hidden Harbor Condos, where I've shown several of these places and helped a few people get in them. In most cases, you can pick one of these up for under $150,000. Some have the little carport, my SUV fits in them, just so you know. A lot of them are two bedroom, one bathroom with a kitchen and living room off the entry. The dining space would most likely just be stools at the kitchen island. But a lot of them have pretty sizable pantries, actually. Off to my right is, as I'm pulling out of Hidden Harbor, is Brighton Cove, which is an apartment complex that rents between $900 and $1,350 a month. And then I will jump back onto Grand River. I figured I'd show you a few more developments in the area. In front of me, as I, I hop into Flint Road, or what turns into Flint Road, is Conley Square, which is a townhome community that was put up within the last several years by Robertson Homes. I saw one of the townhomes sold in the middle of this year for around $370,000 and some change, which was two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and about 1,500 square feet or so. Driving down Flint Road some more, we are turning right into an already established community, but that's how you would reach the new Pulte Homes bluffs at Spring Hills community that backs up to I-96. I have a love-hate relationship with Pulte Homes based on experience, but people seem to like this community that's ranged from $379,000 to $631,000 and some change, so it varies quite a bit based on floor plan and upgrades, of course. Jumping back down Flint Road and taking some of these back streets alongside Grand River, you can see some of the homes. And then I will turn right back onto Grand River and turn left onto Main Street and head away from downtown just to show you some more. You have the CVS on my left. I had a friend that lived close by and we would always stock up in candy and walk back conveniently with all these adjoining sidewalks. Stepping away from town, there's the bridge to my right, an alternative high school, a practice field, and beyond that is Tot Spot, an early childhood center, which is where I went to preschool and kindergarten way back in the day. Then the on and off ramps you'll see to I-96 east and west. Straight ahead at the intersection is Cheryl's Place when we reach that light, which is rated the best breakfast place in Brighton. Off to my right that you may not see after the corner is T-Bones Tavern, which is a popular spot in this part of Brighton. Then we go under the interstate bridges and back to the intersection where we would get back onto Grand River. If I continued straight, I'd hit those crazy roundabouts again like I did coming out of that first subdivision I showed you. If I go left, that will head to Kensington Valley Ice House, which is where I spent my childhood playing hockey and heading right will take us back to the downtown area. but. You can see several businesses along the way too. Dunkin' Donuts there on my left and the strip strip of businesses is a new development as of a few years. There's Brighton Bowl on my right, which I spent a lot of time even though I'm horrible at it. Kroger and Kroger Gas Station on the left, then back to that strip that may look a little familiar from before, but instead of going straight and showing Grand River, I'll turn left to show you the new and improved downtown Brighton. As I mentioned in the last video, instead of building out to appease the growing population, they actually downsized to keep the community feeling by incorporating street parking, wider sidewalks, a fire pit in front of the mill pond you may not catch in this video.
Once we cross the railroad tracks, it becomes a little more residential with historic homes. Turn left at this upcoming light to make our way into Brighton High School, which is where I went for four years. We have the football stadium on the right, the pool, the gym, the cafeteria with all the windows, and baseball and the other practice fields in the back of the school. Stepping out of the high school, I'm going to make my way back to Pine, the Pine Creek subdivision once again, but from this side, as I did the other side earlier, you have a, a bunch of little condo communities within, off to the sides, lots of trees like I mentioned before. A very, very established community to say the least. I'll let you take some time to soak this place in. Feel free to go back and pause anytime you'd like. I just wanted to give you a sense of the community pretty briefly here. I'll also turn around at the luxury cabin that is available for residents. It's a cool little spot that's available and I've, I've been in it before for a party of some kind and utilized some of the water toys they have available too, so that's pretty cool. Stepping out of the community onto Bower Road this time and coming up to the intersection you have the indoor practice field that was a new addition for Brighton High School within the last few years on my left. Then I'll go straight showing you Maltby Intermediate School which is a school I also attended as well as Horning Elementary which actually shares the same parking lot. Stepping out onto Bower Road once more, you'll see Mount Brighton to my right, which is currently open and making snow. But before we peek at that a little more, I'm going to take a left into the Ridge community, which has several custom homes done by Mitch Harris, a pretty well-known custom builder in the area, who has done several projects. There are some lots available in this area as well. It's a nice little spot close to everything in Brighton where you can be tucked away with privacy in a larger home. So, And of course you have that greenery like Brighton is known for. Straight out of this community as you can see is, is Mount Brighton. I'll come back the other way just so you can see it a little bit more on my left. Heading back toward town we have these railroad tracks again just to show you the downtown area coming from the other way and how festive and close-knit the community really is and really how it feels. The construction for this downtown project was a horrible, horrible process and some businesses have closed, but it has cleaned up to be very, very nice down here. I'll head back on Grand River, then take a right onto Rickett Road where you see St. Patrick's Church, the railroad tracks, and Then you have this newer senior home and some more neighborhoods as I approach Lee Road where Hawkins Elementary will be off to the right as where I started this tour. I hope you enjoyed this driving tour and it provided you some value. Be sure to comment what your favorite part of the tour was in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in Michigan, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd be happy to be your go-to resource for all things Michigan. Until next time.